Welcome back to the Barbudo family channel. We are in Scarperia this morning and we're on our way to Borgo San Lorenzo. It's a beautiful town and the main town of the Mugello, which I'll explain later. But we checked out of our hotel and we called the nice taxi driver lady that drove us from this train station to Scarperia yesterday. Apparently she's the only taxi driver in town and she couldn't make it to pick us up this morning. So the owner of our bed and breakfast. This is his car offered to bring us to Borgo San Lorenzo. This was an amazing place. We're having a great experience. We're gonna take you to Borgo San Lorenzo and teach you a little bit about the history. Yeah. Okay, we just arrived in Borgo San Lorenzo. Check it out. He was such a nice guy. He didn't charge us anything to drive us to Borgo San Lorenzo. He told us a little bit about the history of this place. He said that his bed and breakfast that he has used to be a hospital for nuns in the year 1500. He said that this area was used by the Medici to go hunting several hundred years ago. Apparently there was the uh, this Ubaldini family that pretty much owned all of this. And then um, the Medici's conquered and took over by building this castle that used to be called Castel Barnaba. The name Barnaba is very popular and it's the name of the bed and breakfast that we stayed at. The area that we're in is known as Mugello. Mugello consists of various towns, including Scarperia, Borgo San Lorenzo, also Barbarino. It's a popular area, not only for knives, but also for motorcyclists. Motorcyclists come from all around the world because of the scenic roads, but also they have the Motorcycle Grand Prix here every year. So everywhere we seem to go, we see photographs of, of motorcycles and we see helmets as trophies. So that's definitely a, a big, big thing here. Now we're just passing a real estate office. Let's get an idea how much homes cost here. Here in Borgo San Lorenzo, there are two main entrances to enter the historic area. One of them is through this door called Porta Fiorentina. You can see the entrance right here. So our goal right now is to find a place to have lunch. I'm smelling food, like delicious food. It's coming from somewhere nearby. It's somewhere close. Oh, it's probably a home, maybe. Yeah, Ravenna thinks it's one of the homes up here. Let's find a place for clams. Anthony that he got annoyed with me because I said we should have come here with a car is because it's nice to come in Centro and walk around. Centros of the cities of these towns are very small so there is not much going on but it's more beautiful to drive around the hills and see the beautiful Tuscan views. There is like little farms and restaurants that you can stop that are very unique and very picturesque. So next time we will come with a car, my way, not Anthony's way. They just serve the bread. And here in Tuscany, the bread does not have any salt in it. Let me confirm that. No, I don't like it. For some reason, and the Florentines love it. For years, they don't put salt in their bread. All other places in Italy, they put salt, but in Tuscany, none. The story is it goes back years and years because they used to tax the purchase of salt and the Florentines were so stubborn they didn't want to pay the, the Pisani, the people from Pisa, the tax on salt. So they said forget it, we're not going to buy salt. And that's why we have saltless bread here in Tuscany. Many of you may think these are raviolis. Here in Borgo San Lorenzo they're not called raviolis, they are called tortello. 
Tortello is very famous here in the Mugello area. And because of that, they're not just Tortello, they're Tortello Mugellano for Mugello. Mm. We just had a delicious lunch, but then we ran into a problem because we want to go to the station to get our train, but there are no taxis available. Not only are no taxis available in the town, but in all of Mugello, there are no taxis available, which really means two things. One, Italians don't want to make money on Sundays. And two, I guess there's not a demand for it. It's not a very touristy area, but these nice people saw Ravenna walking pregnant and offer to bring us to the station themselves. So, grazie mille, grazie, <laughs> grazie. We just arrived at the station, and I gotta say, those people were so nice. The bed and breakfast owner was so nice this morning. And this is atypical of Florentines and Tuscans because the reputation here is that the Tuscan people are not as kind as these are. They're very arrogant people, is the reputation. So, Contrary to popular belief, there are very nice Tuscans, as you guys saw today. We just bought the train tickets, they were five euros each, and the train doesn't leave for another hour, so we're gonna see what there is to do at Stazione Borgo San Lorenzo. I haven't seen anyone, there's no one here. We had to actually buy the tickets from this machine here. So let's take a walk around Stazione and see what it's about. in Borgo San Lorenzo is larger and nicer than the one in San Piero Asieve yesterday and they have the aperitivo out so I got a crodino which was two euros and fifty cents but with the crodino with the aperitivo you get all you can eat little snacks like this this is a typical lunchtime Italian aperitivo but what I love my favorite is to drink my crodino with Fonzies. This is very famous here in Italia. We don't have it in the States. They're like a Cheetos, but only better. Here at the bar, we made friends with this nice man right here. He's actually Siciliano. And we told him about our great trip to Southern Sicily, but he said that San Vito Lo Capo is a beach on the Northern part of Sicily, when it's numero uno in all of Sicily. So we're gonna consider that for next summer, San Vito Il Capo. Okay, this nice man, come si chiama? Chi? Su, tu. Salvatore. Salvatore, Salvatore. Wow. Salvatore just, just gave us cheese from Naples. He brought it fresh. It was the most unbelievable Ma mozzarella di bufola. Molto buono. Grazie, grazie. I asked for another one of these mozzarella bufola. Salvatore, perché è questa mozzarella molto speciale? Perché a Battipaglia, nella Campania, ci sono le bufole. Questo è il latte di bufola. Guarda come... Come si scioglie la come come latte? Hai visto? Morbido. Guarda come è il latte. il latte. Yeah. Come scende il latte. E anche è morbida. Morbida, certo. Very soft, squishy, tasty. Mmm, number one. Well, that guy Salvatore, he was one of a kind. I asked him how much I can pay him for three pieces of the mozzarella bufala, and he says, no, you don't have to pay me anything. I'm Sicilian, he said. And that's how the Sicilian people are. Very, very special people. So anyway, we're about to hop on this train back to Florence. We hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you learned something about Mugello. Stay tuned for more videos from Italy. Until next time, our beautiful family, out.